Monday, one year from the start of Sudan's civil war, French President Emmanuel Macron announced at a Paris conference that international donors are pledging over $2.13 billion in aid to the country. Although details of when the money will be available are still scarce, the announcement will bring hope to aid workers who previously said only 6% of the funding needed for Sudan this year has been donated. Parts of the capital Khartoum have been flagged with a famine warning in recent weeks. VOA asked a top aid worker in Sudan whether he knows of any previous instances of a capital city anywhere in the world falling into famine. In my, my experience, I've not heard of it. I spent seven years in Somalia and Mogadishu was actually where people went to find relief. Um, and you know, certainly I think for most people, Somalia is you know, sort of a synonym for a very difficult place to work. I'm finding this to be the most challenging environment operationally that, that I've ever seen. Uh, and as, as you mentioned, it's getting worse. Aside from the lack of funding, aid workers say they are confronting security issues and a lack of access due to Sudanese bureaucracy. Most large humanitarian organizations pulled out of Darfur last year because of a lack of security. How the new funding will reach where it is needed most is unclear. Adam Rojal is an advocate for refugees and the displaced in Darfur an area of Sudan that has also received famine warnings. He spoke to VOA via a video call from Darfur. We are seeing problems now, such as hunger and malnutrition, and that's why children are dying daily. For example, as per the surveys conducted by Doctors Without Borders, children are dying daily in Zamzam's displacement camp. Every two hours, there is a child dying there. Rojal also noted that since the start of the war, the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, and Arab militias in Darfur have been perpetrating human rights abuses and ethnically motivated killings against black Sudanese. I mean full-fledged crimes that need international intervention and punishment of individuals who have committed such crimes. Justice is needed sooner or later, and those criminals need to be punished locally and internationally. No one should escape from justice. Human Rights Watch says these killings are coordinated. I think one of the main findings that we have been finding over and over is how these attacks were deliberate, how they were systemic, the strong mobilization and coordination between the RSF and the, uh, the allied militias acting jointly. 8.2 million people have been displaced in Sudan and 24.8 million, more than half the population, need humanitarian assistance, according to the UN. Henry Wilkins, VOA News.